I think it's worth a few minutes to look at the properties of hyperbolas. And, um, and so here's a generic hyperbola, uh, the x squared minus y squared variety, pointed sideways. And uh, I left off the little box, but approximated the transverse axes. Okay, um, and uh, one, one example I, I've, I've seen is that uh, when an airplane passes through the uh, speed of light barrier, it creates a sonic boom. So as the airplane approaches the speed of light, the, the sound waves get compressed. Basically, it's chasing its own sound waves. And all that sound energy gets compressed, and once it hits the, the speed of sound, um, called Mach 1, it, uh, it just, all the energy is just right there. It's just one big punch. And it manifests itself as a sonic boom. So I'm sure you've heard these. These are big booms you hear in the sky occasionally. And... Uh, where it can rattle windows. They've actually been known to break windows. Um, so uh, generally it's kind of forbidden to create sonic booms, but uh, I don't live too far from an Air Force Base, so occasionally you know, they, they'll do one up there. Anyway, so that sound ends up emanating in a, in a cone from the, from the plane and it, it spreads out as a cone, that sound, and when it strikes the ground it's a conic section. And uh, apparently the conic section is uh, actually a hyperbola. <laughs> okay, so, all right. I don't think that's very useful at all, but I just think it's interesting someone figured that out. Um, many years ago, maybe around 1994, somewhere around there, I was, um, well, my, uh, my first wife and our kids, we went to Indianapolis. Uh, she was meeting her parents and, and had some time to kill with my two daughters. And so we went to the Indianapolis Children's Museum. And in the museum, there were there was a spot in there where they had these two dishes about 50 or 60 feet apart. It was a whispering gallery effect. So here's how it worked. And uh, here they are. But imagine them to be, oh, 50 or 60 feet apart. All right, so you stood here, and you talked into the dish. And what happens was that the sound waves best I can figure out, reflected back. Now I'm not sure, now I don't recall exactly how it reflects back, but, um, but they do get focused here. I think they must get focused at the uh, foci somewhere. So eh, I should think that over a little more. But anyway, um, so we had yeah, one kid at one dish and myself and the other kid at the other dish, and we could whisper to each other from 50 or 60 feet away. The sound energy was concentrated between the two. And uh, so I went back to uh, when I went back to work the next week. I I made this an extra credit problem in my calculus class. I said, "Tell me what shape that is. What shape is, are those dishes?" And by golly, a, a student figured it out. I looked over his work; it's perfect. Um, he um, determined that they were hyperbolic dishes, so hyperboloids of of one revolution. Okay, uh, let me see. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, so as far as hyperbola is, and I hope I'm not repeating myself from another video, I'm, I'm teaching this class at the same time, so sometimes I wonder if I'm repeating myself. The, if you take a hyperbola in this one, if you spot it this way, you would create a uh, hyperboloid of one sheet. Is that right? No, no you wouldn't. I'm sorry, let me, let me start over. Oh. I didn't get that right. Okay, so if I spun them this way, I would have a a uh, kind of a dish going this way and a dish going this way, kind of like those dishes. I can't seem to draw this worth a darn, do I? Anyway, there's a dish, there's a dish, but they're rotated. And uh, so imagine a uh, a dish pointed this way and a dish pointed that way. That's a hyperboloid of two sheets. Okay, now I, I don't know anything off the top of my head where that would be good, except that apparently was what was used in the Indianapolis Children's Museum back in 1994 for the whispering gallery effect, hyperboloid of two sheets. Now the hyperboloid of one sheet is uh, interesting. Again, I apologize if I'm repeating myself from an earlier video. Um, if you take the hyperbola and spin it this way, rotate it this way, you get a uh, hyperboloid 
of one sheet, in other words, a one piece object made from a hyperbola that's been rotated. And um, those you see at uh, nuclear power plants, sometimes, or even these power plants. And uh, what happens is, is that it creates a, uh, you know, I think I really did explain this in another video. So I apologize. I'll make it kind of fast, just in case I'm, in case I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, the, uh, the steam has to escape through these cooling towers. And uh, this shape apparently creates a kind of a little bit of a sort of a, little, a slow motion tornado, which spins the, the steam out somewhat faster, allows the steam to escape faster. When the steam can escape faster, then they can boil more water to push through the turbines to turn the engines that create the electricity. Got all that? <laughs> okay, so anyway, when you see these big cooling towers at power plants, um, and I've always seen my nuclear plants, I've driven by a couple of them, they always have these big old towers, and they are hyperboloids in, in shape. Alright, now what's another feature of hyperbolas? Um, the, uh, I got one more feature to talk about when we talk about the Kepler's laws, but there's kind of an interesting connection here to an algebraic function called the hyperbolic cosine hyperbolic sine. So here's how it works. If we um, create, uh, take a point on the hyperbola, I'll, I'll pick this one, and if I connect it from the center and look like over here. Shade this in. Okay, this area is A over 2. Okay, um, I'm not used to explaining this much, so let me get my... Yeah, there we go. A over 2 is that area. And this coordinate is COSH of A, comma, SINH of A. All right, which is x and y. Now, uh, I think I'm off here because I think this only works for x squared minus y squared equals to 1. All right, so if x squared minus y squared is 1 is this hyperbola, then this point <laughs> is the hyperbolic cosine of a comma hyperbolic sine of a that's x, y on the hyperbola, where a, one half of a, is the area connected here. That looks pretty complicated, right? All right, here's the idea. Um, the hyperbolic cosine is, um, here's how it looks. So COSH of x, we call it cosh. The cosh of x is e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. And the hyperbolic sine called cinch is e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. So they really have nothing to do with trigonometry. <laughs> nothing to do with trigonometry, but these functions bear a resemblance to the same relationships and identities that you see in trigonometry. It's not quite the same. I think uh, cosh squared minus cinch squared equals to 1. And so you could plug in uh, here, cosh squared of a minus cinch squared of a will equal to 1. You could work that out algebraically. So there's, there's some kind of trigonometry-like features for cosh and cinch, but they really have nothing to do with trigonometry. And, uh, but they're called hyperbolic functions, and there's a hyperbolic tangent. We call it tanch. Uh, there's cosich, uh, sich, and cough. <laughs> Those are the six hyperbolic functions, and they're on your calculator. Somewhere, they're on there. You might have an HYP button in order to access them. You might have to look at a menu, but you know, scientific calculators, I think just about all of them have these hyperbolic functions. And so, uh, Kosh is, uh, shows up, and uh, I think I explained this the other day too. Did I? Oh, boy. And I should go back and look at that video, videos to see if I've already talked to them about it. So um, if you have a cable dangling between two points here, there you go, the, uh, when it f dangles this way it's a cosh function. 
hyperbolic cosine. And uh, there's some other places where that shows up. So I'm probably going to uh, eventually redo this video and get into better detail on So I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Um, because we don't do anything with this in this course. You do learn about these functions in calculus. And they show up occasionally in engineering and physics. They're not very common, but they do show up. And uh, they have some nice, very wonderful properties. And, and by the way, E is the E from college algebra, 2.718-2818. Okay, so that's uh, kind of what I know about hyperbolas without going into a lot more detail about this. And uh, our last video, uh, at least for now, is going to be the uh, Kepler's Law. So it's worth watching this. It's a very interesting information.